I am back with Raquel Cassidy to talk about other aspects of her career, starting with The Worst Witch, because you've become quite a regular at Phantom Events, and what is quite unique and very lovely is you tend to bring your own entourage with you these days, don't you? I do. I do. I am. Um, <laughs> it's nothing to do with me, I have to say. I um, think what happened was we all met um, at a Phantom event over a year ago now. And in the queue, there were these really lovely young people. Uh, and they struck up a friendship or friendships with one another that have just deepened and I've watched them grow. And so whenever I've met them, because at the other Phantom events, but also at... Um, I did a play at the Almeida and they came oh, many more times than anyone should ever go and see a play. But anyway, they they kept coming so so much that they actually could mouth the words back at us, which, you know, was interesting. But anyway, so they're really, really lovely um, set of young people who support each other and, you know, their friendships deepen as they can now across, you know, these mediums. So, yeah, really, really lovely bunch of people that I've actually... I take her with me everywhere I go. She's really ragged now, bless her, because she's in my little kind of bag where I keep my purse and my keys and stuff like that. Um, so that's my mini HB that I carry. I was hoping to do this interview in my study uh, where I have other beautiful versions of HB in Lego and felt and you know pictures that have been given by this set of people who very kindly have taken me to their hearts. And in my wallet, I actually have this little Lego cat. There you go. And she goes everywhere with me too. Sometimes she slips out when I'm looking for change, but yeah, so far I've managed to keep her for over a year and uh, her for less time, but uh, both very precious, have many precious things given by these beautiful people. Although I do say to them, please don't bring gifts. So that's still my message. <laughs> Well, there is probably somebody watching this at the moment who has just punched the air to see their crocheted figure being. being yeah, displayed. well, this is Carol. This is from Carol, and this is from Heathcliff. So I do oh. know their names. Yeah. But so, obviously, this is essentially a, an online Doctor Who event. So, for anyone that's not familiar with the Worst Witch, what is what is the the premise of the show? Um, well, if anyone has, and I would be shot down by Jill Murphy for saying this, but if anyone's ever seen or heard of Harry Potter, um, The Worst Witch is uh, something that she wrote between the ages of 14 and 18, if I'm not getting this wrong, while she was at school, um, many years before Harry Potter was written, and it was based on a witching academy for young witches. And uh, the main character, Mildred Hubble, doesn't realize she's a witch and somehow stumbles, so I could go into how, but she stumbles into the Witching Academy. And not unlike um, Harry Potter, I think both his um, parents are wizards, aren't they? But uh, not like, unlike Hermione Granger, she has, um, well, I think she has no wit witching blood. Um, or maybe she's from a line of witches. Yes, her mum was a witch. Eventually we find that out. But, but basically it's all females. So it's a wonderful adult cast um, and a wonderful um, child cast, uh, including Bella Ramsey, who's known for many other things as well. Um, and yeah, we just, you know, they learn to be witches and, and we learn about, well, my character learns how to be human <laughs> or to, to, to be more human because she's a, she called Miss Hardbroom and she very much has a hard broom up her spine. There you go. That's a nice way of putting it. Yes. So, um, yeah. And it's a lot of fun. It has a really warm heart. I absolutely love it. Uh, I think it has very high production values, but also really good acting, good writing. And I think every year it's got better. I hope so. Um, certainly the, the attempt is to keep the product as good as possible. But without it laying a, a message on thick, there are things that ch I think children will find, you know, very helpful in their lives, but it's magical as well. Um, you know, and there are characters who behave better and there are characters who behave worse, but ultimately good does ring true and it does seem to pay to be good. And, you know, um, just to have good intentions at the very least, you know, 
And there's magic, you know, I get to wear a pointy hat and fly. It's just fantastic. What's not to love about that? Nothing. It, it clearly has an appeal to adults as well, because we're, we're talking about your, your fans that come and visit you, and they're not children. Uh, and I'm, I'm asking this from, from the perspective of someone who's been a Doctor Who fan all my life. But what do yeah. the appeal is to adults as well? Um, I don't know. I, th- I, d- I mean, for me, I, you know, obviously my body gets older, my face gets older, but inside I'm... I don't think I've gone beyond 17, you know, I there's, my heart is, is still, you know, and sometimes that's actually a battle as a human being. I think it's quite difficult because people respond to you. I think we play at being adults really. So I think the game of, you know, magic and the beauty of childhood and the wonder of life, you know, when you watch things like this and to an extent, when you watch any moving images, any film that someone's put their heart and soul into or any series, it's kind of the make-believe that we all respond to and we love. You know, we love to be told stories and that we should never grow out of that and we should never grow out of playing and and or magic because if you choose... I mean, quarantine's a really interesting time, isn't it? You don't... You spend a lot of time within the same four walls. It's incredibly trying and challenging. And then you might do something like for whatever reason, for work or because you have to visit somebody who's not well or whatever, you might watch the world go by because you're on a bus and you're going through a really hideous part of London, maybe, you know, sort of nothing beautiful. But because you've been in the same four walls, you may see something in, in that journey that you would never see if you were doing it every day, you know. So it's a roundabout way of basically saying that you know, why wouldn't it appeal to, to people who are older? As, I think the fans that I know are, they have a really lovely childlike uh, joy in seeing each other in their friendships in the world. You know, they'll get dressed up. You know, I was met by an HB who was much better at HB than I was at the last um, Phantom event. I mean, I, you know, I stood next to her and she dwarfed me. She looked incredible, and I was like, "You look the part. You are the part. You are HB. I'm cowering now." And I just think there's a playfulness that we all, you know, those of us who allow ourselves to engage, you know, can get from Doctor Who, can get from Star Wars, can get from some of these things that, you know, help us with the, I don't know, difficulties of day to day life, the challenges. I'm holding her, by the way. And the cat. There you go. Now, there's another um, production on your CV, which I must talk to you about. So the, the little known show that is Downton Abbey. Oh, yeah. Abingdon Down. <laughs> <laughs> Have I told you that story? There was um, an, you know, a, an American couple who'd driven, who'd hired a car, come all the way down to uh, very close to Highclere. And I think they stopped somebody. This is rumour has it, may not be true. Uh, and they stopped um, one of the people working on it and went, is this where they film Abingdon down? That's a terrible thing. I think you should cut that. I think you should cut that because I have said that so many times now. I have drooled it and made them sound like idiots. Cut that. Let's cut that. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Note to Fennel Dexter. Down to Abby. What were you <laughs> saying? <clears throat> okay. Still down to Abby. Right. So what was it like joining the cast of... Downton Abbey and being part of such a phenomenal worldwide hit? Uh, Well, I was a massive fan before I um, stepped on set. Um, I was absolutely terrified stepping on set and so excited. Um, I walked into the servants hall. Everybody was just so welcoming and gorgeous. Um, But I was very, very, very nervous. Um, I mean, it was, it really was a dream come true because I had watched something like this was taken and made real. Um, I do love the character I play in it. Um, I think she's kind of singular and noble and quite beautiful at heart. Um, and some of the things, you know, like I've flown around the world you know, with it, um, you know, 
I just think that, yeah, I do, I do think for an actor to join something like that, particularly if you've watched it and enjoyed it is, is, you know, it, it's, a, it is a dream come true and it was, the people are lovely and, uh, and the show is very, very well loved. So what a fantastic thing. And, and how's working on the movie compared to the TV series? It was a lot easier in a way um, for two reasons for me, partly because it's a six week shoot. So um, as an actor, you just kind of go in and you do your stuff and you come out. Also, my character was very much part of the team, but not, you know, I didn't have any heavy storylines or anything. So, you know, where I had had that in, in the series. And um, so for me, it was just sort of rejoining, you know, the whole thing, which I love and um, playing. So literally playing with friends um, and occasionally the camera would roll. And sometimes we'd have to be a bit more serious and sometimes, you know, we'd have to try not to laugh. You know, for example, when um, the, what's his name, the page of the back stairs gets covered in Mrs. Patmore's, whatever it is she's stirring up. I, I can't remember, it was a fruit compote and it looks like he's been splattered in blood. That was quite difficult not to laugh and things like that, you know. So, yeah, it was just, it was just a really sweet thing. And then flying to New York for the premiere and the premiere in London, things like that, you know, you kind of, they don't come around that often, or at least not to me. So great fun. Very blessed. Well, on that note, um, we are out of time, I'm afraid. But thank you so much for giving up your time to chat with me this afternoon. Yeah, well, it's, um, it's my pleasure. And do you think that Miss Hardbroom and her cat could fit in your TARDIS? Oh. That's my question. This one over here, definitely. Yeah. Plenty of room yeah. in there. Plenty of room. Okay. All right. Okay. There you go. Okay. <laughs> okay.